This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollar. As I have with every video today, I am talking about where I'm going to be this weekend. Uh, Brittany Page and I are speaking before the, uh, fo- before the, we're speaking to the uh, Triangle Free Th- Thought Group in uh, <laughs> the Triangle Free Thought Society in uh, the Raleigh-Durham area in North Carolina this weekend in Apex, North Carolina, between 3 and 4.30. I'll put the link to the Facebook group below. You can check it out. Here's the, here's the screenshot here. Um, we'd love to see you there. Invite you. Uh, let's, let's talk about how this entire fake elector scheme of Donald Trump is starting to crumble. And there are multiple investigations. I talked about months ago that the, the investigations that are there federally or even in Georgia and the one that's kind of picking up steam in Michigan, it's not the only one. There are others that are likely to come around. It took them long enough, but they're happening. And so we'll... That's positive, even though it took a a long time. There's one in Arizona. And this story is not just about this particular story. Uh, Adjacent, uh, as a tertiary uh, uh, related item, is uh, the failure of the media. And this particular political article really, really fails. Because what they drill down on is, why are these witnesses these alleged, these accused fake electors who entered into a conspiracy allegedly to overturn the free and fair settled American election of 2020, um, they're being asked to uh, give testimony before a grand jury where they're going to plead the Fifth Amendment. And that's the, that's the headline. Pro-Trump fake electors in Arizona have pleaded the Fifth before grand jury. That's the headline. But then when you dive into the article, it's a whole bunch of questions about why. Why are they making them testify if they know they're going to plead the fifth? This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. The role of a grand jury is to get to the truth, to get to the facts. If someone has material information to provide and they are a witness, they are called. If they feel that what they've done and their testimony, truthful answers, will lead them down a path of, of, of legal jeopardy, then they have the right to assert a Fifth Amendment right under the Constitution against self-incrimination. It's not up to a prosecutor to say, well, if they're going to incriminate themselves, I better not call them. So why highlight this over and over and over in this article? That's the question. It's a failure of the United States media to try to both sides everything. They're they're asserting their Fifth Amendment right. What's the story? Here's the article. Arizona Republicans who falsely posed as electors for Donald Trump in 2020 have appeared before a grand jury in recent days and invoked their Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination as state prosecutors near a decision on potential criminal charges against those who helped Donald Trump try to overturn his loss in the state. The prosecutor's decision to require these people to appear in person is the latest escalation of the long-running probe by the state's attorney general, Chris Mays into election interference by Trump allies. The tactic is also highly unusual and risks biasing the grand jury against key targets of the probe, according to independent legal experts. I want you to pay attention to that categorization, that they are independent legal experts, because the person I'm going to read a quote here from is a Republican, a former a U.S. attorney appointed by a Republican president. He's not an independent legal uh, observer. Uh, According to independent legal experts who have worked as both prosecutors and defense lawyers, uh, if the grand jury charges them, it could even provide a long shot basis, long shot basis for the targets to challenge the indictment. Quote, my view is that the better practice is not to call people before the grand jury who you know are going to invoke the Fifth Amendment, said Paul Charlton, Republican, a former Arizona assistant attorney general. Why? Because all that does is unnecessarily prejudice the grand jury. Look, I sat on a federal grand jury for a year and a half. I was on the grand jury in Orange County that indicted Michael Avenatti. I was one of those jurors. We had people, witnesses in that case, plead the fifth. In many of the cases, plead the fifth amendment. It didn't bias anybody. 
It's their right under the Constitution. They have something to say. They think may incriminate themselves. That's all part of the process. It's baked in to the Constitution. Let's not make it something it's not, Politico. <clears throat> Uh, the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution allows people to avoid answering questions from investigators if those if they fear those answers could incriminate them. Pleading the Fifth is not an admission of wrongdoing, but grand jurors who watch someone invoke the Fifth Amendment might unfairly assume the person is guilty. That's why targets of an investigation are seldom asked to testify in front of a grand jury, especially if prosecutors know in advance that the targets will invoke their rights to not answer questions experts say. It's not how it works. Again, uh, final paragraph here, but prosecutors working for Mays have required some of the false electors they're investigating to physically appear before the grand jury and formally assert their Fifth Amendment rights, despite the fact that their defense lawyers told prosecutors they would take that step, according to two people familiar with the probe who are granted anonymity to share the details on the sensitive investigation. You see, here's the thing. These people are... They're, they're either invited or they are subpoenaed to come and compelled to give their testimony. They can answer the questions. They have every right under the Constitution to answer the questions or to assert their Fifth Amendment right. No one's making them assert their Fifth Amendment right. They can say what they know. They can give the information that they have about it. But they also have the right not privilege, the right under our constitution, our, our set of laws, our, our, our system of jurisprudence, they have the right that is protected by our laws to not do so. And that's what they did. I don't see the controversy here. I don't see where Politico needs to beat this drum over and over and over, calling into question the maneuvers of just trying to get to the facts. If they have the information, why would they not be brought in to answer questions about that information that they have? It would seem uh, investigatory malpractice to not uh, compel the testimony of people who you know to have the information you seek, right? What do you think? Uh, I'd love to know. You can call, leave me a brief voicemail. Please keep them brief and don't leave me a series of several voicemails in a row. Just. After the first one, you're, they're just not going to get listen, listened to. 714-576-4054. Uh, of course, you can email me, as always, daily at dollamore.com. I would love to hear from you. Uh, if you want to help support this work, if you appreciate what I do, moreover, if I bring you value, if I do something for you that brings you value, please consider supporting this work, clicking the join button below, becoming a channel member on YouTube for two bucks a month. You can also go over to my Patreon page, patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. I'd love to hear from you. Follow me on the social media. I'm at Dollamore on Twitter and Instagram and threads and TikTok and Facebook and Blue Sky. And it's a lot. <laughs> if you're already there, check me out at Dollamore. I love and appreciate you. Thanks for your engagement. I will see you next time. Until then, be genuine. Take care of one another. <laughs>